Thank you for seven years of listening, and as we enter our seventh year, I would like to take a moment to talk about our latest book. Sizzle Reel has just come out on Kindle Direct, and it's available on all Kindle devices, as well as the Kindle app for iOS and Android, and it's available effective today, 6th, yesterday. So it's available now. Um, if you want to go to bitbit.ly slash mwpbooks, you can see the full list, including Sizzle Reel, and all the ones before that. Um, everything that gets purchased through there or read through K, uh, KNP or Kindle Lend, whatever the hell I think it's called, Kindle, the, the Kindle Unlimited thing. Um, anything through there helps the show out a lot. Uh, thank you. Um, and thank you for listening and to the next, uh, you know, hopefully not, <laughs> hopefully more than seven years. Thank you. It was such a good episode and then we started talking about like football and then shit. <laughs> Thank you for your color commentary. And three. Okay, I guess we're recording now. Welcome to 30 Minute Reviews. And, oh, you got your little notification there, too? Yep. It says uh, recording in progress. Welcome to 30 Minute Reviews. I am Adam, and as you can hear, we have a guest today. Josie's here. Hello. So, today is the seventh anniversary of starting the show. We did the first episode seven years ago, where I think we decided in that first episode that we were going to cover both Red Dawns um, out of the gate. That was our big decision we made. Um, and then we, now there, there was something I wanted to address, not with you specifically, just in general. Um, we made a lot of bombastic claims over the course of the show, over the years. Um, a lot of which didn't exactly pan out um, because we, were, we, we reported on things that were like half rumors and stuff. And a lot of it was wrong. Um, so like at one point we said that the, the person in, um, do you remember the last Jedi? Yeah. Um, do you remember Benicio del Toro in the last Jedi specifically? Sure. Do you remember what his character's name was? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, well, that's not the point here. The point is that we said he was going to be Boba Fett's (laughs) son because we reported on something that was flagrantly inaccurate. And we said, oh, it should be Boba Fett's son. That's cool. And that didn't happen. But every once in a while, we are right. Um, and by a long shot. So I'm going to share. I found this. I was looking for. We definitely did this. We definitely called how Infinity War was going to end. I've been looking for that clip for a while. I can't find it. I found this clip, though. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, screen. Share. And I'm going to play this clip. Hopefully it plays through because I should be sharing audio too. So I think they'd have to, if they're going to introduce Daredevil into a movie, it'd be Infinity War Part 2. Okay. I think it's going to be a, like, hey, Daredevil, what's going on in Hell's Kitchen? You think that like, they'll even put Daredevil in? I think, I think so because they're going, it's going to be, if, if they're, it's going to be as huge as it should be with this huge. It's going to be they, like, they do, Thanos is coming they to New York. they introduce him as only a lawyer. No, that'd be really funny. That's what they that that's what they should have done in Civil War is have him be a lawyer somewhere. Yeah, that'd be good. Like in a small cameo. Now, did you hear that? Mostly. Okay. Now, audio issues aside from the fact that we were recording using Skype at the time, <laughs> um, and I don't know if you recall, but anytime we had to do it, it was a good forty minutes of setup to oh, yeah. get it to work because it never <laughs> actually worked right. Yeah. Um, and you would think that it would have been easier after the first time, but no, because Skype is so difficult to integrate with recording software. It took a long ass time. Now it's just Zoom. You just record it and pull the audio out, and you're done. Um, we said it'd be great if they introduced Daredevil in the movies as just a lawyer in a small cameo, which we <laughs> said it was going to be in Infinity War part two because endgame was not titled at that point because this was back in 2015 um or very early 2016 even before civil war came out um but i'm gonna you know i'm gonna i'm gonna take that as a you know as a we called that because that did eventually happen 
I think you need just an episode of all the things that you called. Oh, or all the things that we called wrong would be better because like there was another one when I did when I had COVID the first time um, and I was sick. I did a like a, a cut of a bunch of movies that came out that weekend and it was the weekend Man of Steel came out. Mm-hmm. So I, I pulled the clip when we talked about Man of Steel years later, obviously, because we weren't doing the podcast in 2013. But um, I kept in the beginning part because it was the same year that season one of Legends of Tomorrow ended. Mm-hmm. Um, and it ended with them saying, oh, there's going to be a huge cameo. There's a huge cameo coming. And again, we were right, but at the wrong time, because mm-hmm. we did a lengthy discussion on if Booster Gold was going to show up in the finale. Um, it just, he didn't. It was Our Man, but it was season one's finale was Our Man. Season eight's finale was Booster Gold. Um, so again, we were wrong, but... Yeah, I think that if we go through and find all the shit we were wrong about because I didn't vet anything, I was just like, yeah, this seems cool. I think you should just do it as a compilation. Yeah, that's going to be a fun. <laughs> that, 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 maybe for the 10th anniversary, we can do that and comment on how wrong we were. That sounds great. So, um, <laughs> we've got three years to get that together. Um, yep. <laughs> so now, um, San Diego Comic-Con was two weeks ago, and I wanted to do this last weekend, but I was sick. Um, and I couldn't sit and talk for any length of time, which sounds like a really first world problem. Um, but I wanted to get your take on the Marvel announcements. Um, because there was a bunch of announcements from Marvel that they did last week or two weeks ago. Sure. What are they? Well, I, no, I, I, I know That's what, <laughs> I have it listed out. I have, I, I, I work for the Smithtown Chronicle. So I did a, instead of my weekly streaming recap, I did a weekly recap of everything they announced at San Diego. Um, and I have a seven page thing I did about that for, for them. Um, I have to read the seven pages right now. No, 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 no. I have, I'm going to, I'm going to go down to the end where the Marvel stuff is. And we're going to talk about the Marvel stuff. Okay. Now you watched the Wakanda forever trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, what were your thoughts on the Wakanda forever trailer before we. The outfits look that? awesome. For the uh, for the the Atlanteans, just like all around, I think that the costume design is on. I think on it point. won. I think it won the Academy Award for that back in Did it? Um, in 20, 2019, It would have been, but I think it won. Well, it definitely won production design, but I think it won costume design too. Uh, they they're bound for it again with this one. So, um, how do you feel about all the stuff they're trying to do in this movie? Because that's my. I don't know. Bit. I'm really super duper confused. I have no idea who the blue people are. I have no idea who the underwater is and why there was a baby floating underwater. It was super yeah, that's, confusing. Someone gave birth at some point, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting, I guess. But I'm not entirely yeah. sure who that was. There was a freshly birthed baby, but like no blood and guts around. Just saying. Well, I mean, it's a PG thirteen. It's a PG thirteen movie. It's a water birth. It's like, what are they going to do? So the placenta <laughs> floating next to her, like, I think they... it, kinda, it takes away from the moment. I think if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but that I think there's going to be. Here's the thing. I think they should have split this into two movies. One just to be who the next Black Panther is going to be, and one to be like and here's all the shit with well, the Atlanteans wasn't the, wasn't the Black Panther the sister I think it's going to be I've seen people also that speculate the that the, the sister that it's going to be the girlfriend from the oh. first one Lupita Nyong'o's character maybe I'd rather it be the sister I think that'd be cool yeah and, and there's really comic like there's comic precedent for that hmm. um the I think it's doing too much because did you see the the person carving out the heart at one point in the trailer? No. In the metal? No. Oh, yeah. At one point in the trailer, someone like it, it she welds out like a heart shape in a mm-hmm. in in a piece of metal. Um, that's the introduction that's of Iron Heart. That's what that's supposed to be. Yes. That's not a metal heart. Oh, well, how okay. are we supposed to get that from that little clip where it's like? A cup, like it's so boxy. Well, because the thing is, it's meant to be her arc reactor shape, not her arc reactor, but the thing that goes over the arc, the arc reactor on her chest is heart shaped. 
Um, sure, I definitely didn't get that. Like there was nothing yeah. enough to like introduce it for somebody who maybe doesn't hasn't read those comics or doesn't know those characters. Well, I think that it's more like we're going to introduce these characters here and then we're going to um, move out, you know, and then she's getting her own show next year on Disney Plus or two years from now on Disney Plus. Well, maybe um, it's a good thing that there's all this um, unknown and introduction of new and new things that people maybe don't necessarily know. It kind of brings that vibe when, um, you know, like at the beginning of the Avengers and when they were doing the introductions for all of that, it, of, of all those characters to, you know, our lives, actually. Um, they, you know, there was that sense of mystery and excitement that mm. wasn't hasn't been there for a while because we all know what's happening and who the people are well i think even like for, i think part of the problem is that like they've been relying a lot on weird marketing techniques that have been giving away way more of the movie than ever before mm -hmm. because like there's no reason why everyone walked into no way home knowing full well that um spider-man and then you're also going to have andrew garfield and toby mcguire we're going to be in that movie like we knew daredevil was going to be in the movie we knew that um like electro was going to be there we knew sandman was going to be like we knew all the stuff going into it mm -hmm. like there was no reason there's why that certain, should have been the case there's that um it's a mystery again yeah that's been missing for a while um granted this is also only a teaser they're going to do a there's definitely gonna be a full trailer next month at d23 well hopefully um, they don't ruin it they don't give it all away or it's like your brother's dead get ready to wear the suit now to be I'm, the next I'm, black panther yeah i'm far more interested in it knowing like not knowing like i want to yeah. go because i want to know what's going on like i've never seen those people before where did they come from where if they give it all away in the in the trailer that'll be really disappointing and i heard a rumor about it i don't know how accurate it is but we could be setting ourselves up for another clip for times we were wrong um <laughs> but i heard a rumor that the the post credit scene is going to introduce a major player um, going forward uh, that's not related to Black Panther. Okay. Um, do you want me to tell you who it is? Or do you want me to leave it a potential mystery if it's real? I don't know. Is Just this keep... even a character that I'm going to know? I'm fairly certain you'll know this character. Um, oh. Because it's like there was a rumor before Multiverse of Madness came out that there was going to be a post credit scene with Deadpool. Mm -hmm. But that uh, wasn't there. This one was Doctor Doom oh, is going to okay. be in the post credit tag, um, trying to get the vibranium for reasons unknown. Um, oh. That will be wrapping up phase four, which is what we've been in since WandaVision. Okay. So phase four was WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, What If, season one, and Loki season one, too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Hawkeye, uh, Black Widow, Eternals, Shang-Chi, uh, and then this year was Multiverse of Madness, Thor, Love and Thunder. Did you watch Thor, Love and Thunder yet? Um, the one that came out last month? No. Okay. Um. I feel like I'm definitely missing stuff. Um, maybe I'm I not. I want though. to see it, though. Was it worth it? It's, um, it's going to be on Disney Plus next month. Maybe just wait for it to go to Disney Plus. Don't rush out to a theater to see it. Um, one of the things I've gotten very good at lately, not to toot my own horn, is being able to tell when they use uh, stagecraft at, at ILM to shoot things, okay. which is they have this... It's this. Did you ever watch the 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 Mandal? You've watched the Mandalorian at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you know how they, they did that behind the scenes series with the directors roundtable with all the directors after season one, and they talked about this thing they called they called it stagecraft. It's also called the volume. It's a giant sound stage where the wall behind them is a giant screen, um, and it's a it's a beyond ultra HD screen, and they will put images on there. And they'll walk in front of it. So it's like a green screen, but you can physically see what's on it behind you. And the other thing is, it, like, like, let's say that the computer screen in front of me is it. If I hold my phone up like this or like this or like this, the, mm -hmm. the, it'll tell that the camera pointed and it'll orient the image on the screen to match where the camera is. 
that's cool yeah and it works I mean, with any camera you know what that sounds like is that sounds like um that scene from or how they film the what are they called? propos in hunger games yes yes which is a new one next year are you excited for that of course, I didn't know that there was one. Now I'm excited. Yes. Yeah, Ballad of Songbirds <laughs> and Snakes in next November. Um, hmm. So, yeah, so they they film part of Thor on that. You can definitely tell because it, like the wall behind them looks very like you can tell they shot it on a sound stage, not like you know somewhere oh. with a full thing. Yeah. Um, now, now, since that's not something that I like am familiar with, or even like this is my first time being even introduced to the concept of it, it'll be interesting to watch it and see yeah. if I can point, figure it out. <laughs> well, did you watch Kenobi? Yeah. You know, in the second episode when he's wandering around with Leia in that city and yes. um, that was shot on that thing. That's that whole scene in that city was shot. I think it makes the city look endless behind them. Oh. Um. I definitely didn't notice anything weird when I was watching. It yeah, might be some, what... It might be something that once you've once it's pointed out to you, you might see it. Oh, maybe I shouldn't then, so I don't okay. ruin the magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I feel like I'm definitely missing other Phase Four things. Um, but you know, Phase Four with a lot of reintroduction, laying the pieces on the table to be like, who's here, who's active, you know, where are they, what are they doing, that kind of thing. It was a lot of phase four. Um, phase, oh, also this year is She-Hulk, um, which is coming out. I saw the, I saw the trailer for that one. Do you like it? Um, I think it'll be maybe cute, hopefully. I don't know. Which trailer did you see, the new one or the first one? The first one, the CGI is a little iffy. I saw the 30-second one from, that Hulu's playing. Oh, okay. So you maybe saw some mix of footage from both. Yes. But they fixed the CG. And- Okay, I was gonna say this the CGI for her face looked real fucked. I think it's I think that it's okay. If if you're seeing more recent footage and you're like that, you might not <laughs> like it because it's like it's definitely better than it was. Really? Yeah. Oh. But I have something to show you from that too. So if you'll turn your attention to the screen. Are, are they trying to imply that she's gonna be like, no, I'm only a lawyer. I'm not gonna use my super. No, 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 no. She, okay. she very much is. She's she she hauled for most of it. That's like, what I got from it. So yeah. that's good to know. I'm more interested yeah. in it now. It's and, and she breaks the third wall too. Um a lot in this Oh, show, cool. So. Um let me show you a something from She Hulk that has me excited. If you'll turn your attention to the screen, there we go. Let me zoom in. Oh my fun. god, a nude! Yeah, <laughs> let me uh, zoom in down here. That is from the She-Hulk show. Oh. So, do you like Daredevil? Because get ready for a lot of Daredevil in the news today. So, and that was another thing I was looking through for because I seem to recall in the first few episodes we covered daredevil for like the first 14 weeks or something like that that's because um, it was pretty decent then and i seem to recall there being a thing where i like there was a period where i asked did you watch it and you would just say no so i was trying to get a super <laughs> I cut together like i had a super cut together of like <laughs> did you watch it this week no did you watch it this week no no because it was bad <laughs> the first season of daredevil was not bad the second season is not as good but the third season is also great even though no, it has probably like the any, most, I think I don't like any of the Marvel shows from that time period. The you don't you're I not didn't a fan like of the Daredevil. Dare Le- I didn't like Luke Cage. I didn't like the lady one from oh, Jessica the, Jones. Yes, no, I didn't like really any of. Them. Jessica Jones was okay. Jessica Jones went off the rail pretty quick once that like it should have been a self-contained first season and then not done season two and three because I think once you got into seasons two and three, it kind of went off the rails a little bit. Mm-hmm. um iron fist was basically irredeemable um that one was really bad and um i liked the first season of luke cage i never watched the second um yeah daredevil daredevil was my jam and i never watched punisher either i couldn't um, get into any of them oh yeah i also didn't really like the punisher i just couldn't get into them it's not that i didn't like them or that i did like i thought they were bad they just weren't my jam yeah it, 
Well, the Flash is ending, so you can go and watch all of that if you need something to watch. All no, nine I'm seasons good. of the Flash. I also am <laughs> not into that one. <laughs> uh, I'll live, thank you. Oh. Um, it, it it it's so funny to see the the way that this is off topic, but it's so funny to see the way that that's being portrayed by news sites where it's like it's canceled after nine seasons. It's like, all right, how many TV shows run for nine seasons to begin with and get to go out on their own terms after giving the the actors a huge pay raise? to come back for the ninth season like but if they got canceled they really didn't go out on their own terms no no no. they they didn't get well i mean they got canceled and as much as the network got sold to a news company and the network's not going to exist anymore oh yeah so cw is within the next five years is not going to exist not okay. even as we know it now it's just it's going to be it was sold to next star which is a uh, like news nation i don't know if you've heard of that channel no um it's a, uh, it's a, it's kind of like CNN or uh, MSNBC or anything like that, but that's what CW is going to be from eight to 10 because mm-hmm. um, local affiliates own the channels during the day. Back on topic. Uh, so she, <laughs> she Hulk comes out in two weeks or a little under two weeks. And that Are will be the last Disney. It? It's a Disney plus show. Oh, it's coming. It's a show. Yeah. Oh, I'm more interested in it now. <laughs> Yeah, they're half hour. It's eight half hour episodes. So it's meant to be more like a workplace comedy okay. style than a uh, than a, a you know like Falcon and Winter Soldier, which was very you know heady. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Black Panther ends it off. Phase <laughs> five starts with Ant Man the Wasp: Quantum Mania. I don't really like. Not that I don't like. I just don't. I cannot get into the Ant Man movies. I Period. think it's I think it's just his I like the, his character with everybody else and all the, the like in the Avengers and the like the times that he pops up then, but I'm you, you don't like I'm him okay. in his own movies? Not really. Well, here I are think some he's things, too much of a supporting character. Here are some things from Ant Man the Wasp Quantum Mania that may interest you. Uh the villain, one of the two villains will be Modoc. The giant floating head with the tiny ass arms. Oh, that'll be cool. Yeah, he's, and uh, apparently I've heard, again, this isn't confirmed. This is something I heard that may make another compilation later, but I've heard it's going to be Corey Stoll reprising from the first one. Uh, Do you remember the first Ant-Man? I, sure, sure, yeah, yeah, mostly. Well, uh, at the very end, to beat Yellow Jacket, he shrinks down into the quantum realm. And he goes into his suit and starts breaking everything. And then he mm-hmm. comes out and he sees him like sh- like shrinking in all fucked up ways and he disappears. Um, that's what it is. It's gonna be him in that suit all fucked up and he becomes Modoc. According to this rumor I read. I don't know. Ant Man becomes Modoc? No, um, Yellow Jacket. The bad oh. guy from the first Ant Man movie. Um, and the other bad guy was previously introduced in a movie. Um, Jonathan Majors is reprising his role from Loki as Kang the Conqueror. Hmm. Um, also, they recast um, Cassie Lang for a third time, the daughter, because um, the first time the daughter was that little girl. Um, Hold on, I'm Googling who these people are. Oh, Kang the Conqueror. No, Cassie Lang. I already, I just, the yellow jacket guy. Uh, now I'm going to see who Cassie Lang is. You remember the little girl? Oh, from the I like her. Okay. They recast her. Oh, okay. Well, be, because remember, there was a time jump in Infinity War Endgame. Oh, okay. So in Endgame, when he goes back to his house, she's played by an older girl this time because it's been five years. She's no longer a little mm, kid. She's, that's right. But they recast her again because they wanted to put up someone with a name in the role. Um, Catherine Newton is going to be playing Cassie Lang. Um, did you see Freaky? Freaky? Yeah, the movie Freaky. Oh, I know Catherine Newton. Yeah, she's also in the Pokemon movie. Yeah, she's she's been in a few different things. She does a lot of like TV shows and TV drama things on like Netflix and stuff. Right? Oh, really? I, I, I guess. believe so. Is this not the same? I'm blonde not 100. Girl. Yeah, she's I'm blonde, thinking yeah. of. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I just know her from those two movies. Um, hang on one second. Let me just fix this real quick. Uh, suggested address. 
da, 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 da. Right, and currently the case is update. Okay, so they are that's fixing it. Um anyway, cool. Meaning I was on limited minutes. All right. Um so she's playing um what's it called? She will be playing uh Cassie Lang from here on out. Um because she will be suiting up as stature um in the movie, which is a young Avengers character who's okay. Ant-Man, but, you know, younger. Uh, the next thing after that is the Disney Plus show Secret Invasion, um, which is Nick Fury-focused, but it's teased as a crossover event. Um, Rhodes is in it, um, War Machine, and there are a few other people in it. It's, a, it's, it's about the Skrulls. Remember from Captain Marvel, the Skrulls? The, no. Did you watch Captain Marvel? Yeah. The green alien guys. Oh. Yeah. Yes. They came to Earth and are taking over the world by pretending to be people and uh, taking over their lives. Oh, okay. So that will be, that's the plot there is Nick Fury trying to stop that. This is going to be a heavier one. Yeah. It's it's a dense, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not dense, tense spy trailer, thriller which, you know, kind of like um, th- uh, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Okay. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is the next movie after that on May 5th, 2023, um, which is going to talk about Rocket's backstory. The bad guy is going to be the high evolutionary. And apparently the Gamora that escaped during Endgame, which, can we address that for a second? Um So what was Tony's snap in Endgame? It was to go back to the second before the snap. To make make it like the snap never happened. She died before the snap. No, no, no. When 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 Tony snaps, not Hulk. When Tony snaps, he wipes out all of Hulk, all of um, Thanos's people. He wipes out Thanos and his entire army. Oh. Um, why was Gamora not included in that? In the army? Because he didn't know Gamora flipped. So, like, did the gauntlet know not to kill Gamora? Like, Gamora was already dead? No, because she was on the ship. Because the the Thanos that comes at the end of Endgame is the one from Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm Mm-hmm. Because... Oh. Yeah, because remember, it's... They come from the scene on Morag. In the beginning, where he's he's going through the temple and saying, "Come and get your love." By yes, Redbone. I mean it's an all-powerful object, so of course it feels like if an she has, if she no, that makes sense. <laughs> that entirely makes sense. It's an all-powerful it object that is, and it was a simple. It was a statement of like, "Okay, bye bye," and she was no longer considered part of his army, even though he considered it. She wasn't. Okay, so the, that, that just it, proved her alignment. So it's kind of like what's it called? It's kind of like if you if you're dying and you pray for forgiveness on your deathbed, it's like all right, whatever, you're good. So if if like one of the Katari was like about to get, he sees his friend over there getting like turned to dust. He's like, oh shit, I'm gonna switch sides. And then like his hand starts to go, and he's like, oh okay, we're good now. Like, but it has to. Be, it shows a true alignment change. All right. Still, she's alive somehow, and she has taken control of a, <laughs> a faction of the Ravagers. Um, and Adam Warlock will be introduced in that movie as well. Um, there, there are two shows in Disney Plus in the summer of 2023. Uh, Loki season two, with everyone coming back from the first one. Um, and a Hawkeye spinoff about Echo, uh, the girl from that who was deaf, who had the two prosthetic legs. Um and in that one, strap yourself in because that will be a reprisal of uh, Charlie Cox as Daredevil and Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin. Ooh. So it's going to be like another Daredevil thing. So get ready for that. Uh, July 28th, 2023 is The Marvels, which is a sequel to Captain Marvel, the one, um, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, and WandaVision. <laughs> Because it's a team up of uh, Monica, um, Kamala, and um, 
what's it called? Um, and, and Carol. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's just me, but I keep mixing up Kamala and Kamala because, you know, the vice president's name is Kamala and they're spelled exactly the same. Um, what? <laughs> Wait, say the difference between those again. Who? You have a hard uh, time with Camilla and no, Kamala? No, not Camilla. No, the, the, the vice president of the United States, mm-hmm. Kamala Harris. Okay. Her first name is spelt the same way as Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. Kam- they both spelled Are you K-A-M- saying Kamala and Camilla? No, it's Kamala. It's how you pronounce the vice president's name. Kamala? Yeah. And then Kamala. Kamala. is Kamala Khan. It's, there are two different pronunciations of the exact same spelling and I keep getting corrected. Soft A and hard I, right? What's the difference? There's no I in either of them. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's K-A-M-A-L-A. It's just in one, the Kamala. M is emphasized. Yeah. Kamala. Like if yes. you're from Boston. Kamala. Right? Yeah. Okay, right? I'm running. A, I got yes. it. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, then is Ironheart, the next show, which is the debut, the, the solo show of um, Ironheart from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Um, and the bad guy is going to be, did you watch In the Heights by any chance? Um, um, or Hamilton on Disney Plus? Yes, Hamilton. Okay, you know the guy who plays Hamilton's son who gets shot in the duel? Uh, um, yeah, sure. Let me just remember that real quick. Hold on. <laughs> Give me a second. He is, been, he's going to be an Ironheart in, an undis, in, an, in a major but un, uh, unstated role. Uh, yeah, Anthony Ramos. Yeah. <laughs> um, then the next movie after that is oh, Blade. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I know who that guy is. Yeah. Anthony Ramos. Okay. Yeah. Um, Blade is the next movie after that. Okay. Um, with Mahershala Ali as Blade. Uh, that is November third, twenty twenty three. Um, I winter am twenty. Forward to that one. That could be cool. Um, it's directed by the guy who directed Mogul Mowgli on HBO Max, if you want to see some of his past work. The director, Mowgli. I mean. Okay. Um, then the next thing after that that'll end out 2023 is uh, Agatha Coven of Chaos, which is a spinoff of WandaVision about Agatha Harkness with Catherine Hahn reprising. Okay. Um, so... That's going to be cool. Um, Then in 2024, there's a date still held for February of 2024, but no movie has been put on that date yet. Me personally, I think that's Deadpool 3. Oh, okay. Because uh, they have a director, Sean Levy's directing it, and they have uh, Ryan Reynolds has started to get back into shape for it. So I think that that's enough time to get that movie out and done. Um, spring of 2024 is Daredevil Born Again, which is an 18 episode series that picks up the Daredevil show from Netflix with full cast reprising. <laughs> so I know you're excited about that. <laughs> yep, super. Yay. <laughs> uh, May 3rd, 2024 is the release of Captain America New World Order which will be the first movie with Sam Wilson as Captain America. Um, That is directed by Julius Ona, who directed Luce and the Cloverfield Paradox. Uh, Luce is really good, though, if you haven't seen it. It's on Hulu, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, It's a very very small movie, but it's really good. Uh, And then it ends off Phase 5 on July 6th, 2024, with Thunderbolts. Do you know what the Thunderbolts are? No. Oh, Thunder... is it like Power Rangers? No. The Thunderbolts <laughs> are like... What the fuck is wrong with this chair? The Thunderbolts are like... <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Like Mar- 
this chair, it, it's just moving on its own without me doing anything. Um, I don't know if you noticed that like my head is like a good inch lower than it was when we started this. Oh, that's what you mean. I was like, I see you moving a lot. Like, what no, do you mean like, it's moving on I've been, its own? I've been, I've been very slowly just going, like moving down. I'm like, what it's the haunted. fuck is going on? With it's this? haunted. Um, that's what it is. The Thunderbolts is Marvel's Suicide Squad. So it's a team up movie of all of their anti-heroes and villains who are still around. Um, so almost certainly Isn't that literally just what da- Daredevil is Daredevil no. 2 was. No. Who else would be an anti-hero? Well, so far, well, here's the thing. The the Except guy for like Ant Man because they pretend like that baby face man is I, actually I a bad guy I, or something. I don't know what they the hell steal you're talking shit. about. No, he no. When they say anti-hero, they mean like morally gray heroes like punisher would be an anti-hero um but so far i what they're doing is don't they, they consider ant-man a morally gray because he no. used to break into shit yeah because he used to steal stuff he doesn't steal stuff anymore unless it's i mean from, i don't know but no ant-man would not be on that team um when they say anti-heroes what they're referring to is characters like or villains mostly um, so I think it's basically confirmed at this point that Abomination will be on it. He is the guy from uh, Incredible Hulk who had a small role in Shang-Chi and is a major character in She-Hulk. I just want another Shang-Chi. I want another Shang-Chi. That, that's what there, there is some of that coming up, too. Get ready for that. Okay. Um, so and then like Justin Hammer. Do you remember Iron Man 2, Sam Rockwell's character? Mm-hmm. Um, he could be there. Um, the uh, U.S. agent from um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier could be okay. there. And the team leader would likely be Julia Louis-Dreyfus's character, who's been recurring. Um, and uh, the other two that I've seen thrown around, but I don't know if it's confirmed, are Kate Bishop and Yelena Belova. Um, as Hawkeye and Black Widow would be on the team too. Okay. Um, did you watch Hawkeye? I did. I think the most entertaining part of that show, besides Kingpin in the last episode, um, because it, you, you, you remember how he's got that weird like inflection to his voice, D'Onofrio. It's great. And I, I love that he makes that choice, but like the weird cadence he talks with, he can't do while he's doing sign language. Mm -hmm. so like the whole time he's talking he's also the the whole time he's doing sign language and stuff he's also muttering under his breath so he can get the cadence out for the audience okay it's so funny Hmm. um but like the the other really good thing about that was the relationship between yelena and and kate over like two episodes that they were in together um that'd be cool to have more of that Hmm. and that'll end off phase five very little was given about phase six besides the beginning and the ending of phase six. Okay. So the be- phase six begins with November 8th, 2024, Fantastic Four. Who? They haven't announced yet. Um, I'm thinking maybe Krasinski coming back from uh, Multiverse of Madness. That's the one... Yeah, the one where the uh, uh, Professor X was in it, right? Yeah. Okay. And Jim from The Office. Yes, he'd make a good one. Yeah, he was he was in that one scene. I could see them bringing him back. I think the only reason they don't is they might want someone who is A, younger than they can have in the role for a decade, mm-hmm. and B, uh, someone who's not as established and tied up in other projects at Paramount. Oh, um, and they can pay them a lot less than they have to pay John Krasinski. You think they'll pick Adam Driver? Mm, probably not. <laughs> I saw interesting casting for that. I, did, you, did you watch? They just you want a tall Netflix? guy with like brown hair. That's all they want. Well, did you watch You on Netflix? That sh- that creepy ass show with the guy who yeah. stalks. Yeah, that guy was someone I saw put as uh, Mr. Fantastic. Pen Badgley. And I'm like, that could that could work. Um, that same casting rumor. And again, 
we're making something else for our for our little uh, compilation. Um, Melissa Benoist, mm-hmm. who played Supergirl on the CW, as Sue Storm, and mm-hmm. the actor for Doctor Doom. Did you ever watch The Mentalist? Um, it was a a network like police police procedural. Yeah, like ten years. Yeah, yes. that guy in the lead is Doctor Doom. Simon, I whatever think, his name is. I think he's, I don't know, what does he look like now, though? He's, he's still pretty handsome. What's his, what's his Full name, homo. Patrick Jane? Still, I don't think it's Patrick Jane. I think that it's uh, uh, okay. Simon something. Simon something. Simon Baker. There he is, yep. Simon Baker. He doesn't look that bad. He looks exactly the same and has not aged a day. Yeah, but like that for, accurate. Yeah. Oh no, favorite... no, no! Here we go. Here's some normal pictures of him. <laughs> Here we go. He just has. He's got sad eyes. I don't know if he could. I can't picture him as a villain. But... My favorite. My favorite take on Doctor Doom under the mask is not that he's horribly disfigured, because they've done both. Where it's like he wears the mask because he's horribly disfigured. But they also do a take where he's got like one little scar like on his chin here. Mm -hmm. And he deems it an imperfection. So he wears the mask because he's that narcissistic that he's like, I'm imperfect. I can't be seen without this mask. And I think that that would work. That's the one I think would work better with this. With that, if that's if that's accurate, we gotta know if it is. Uh, then there are two other movies. He's too nice looking though. So I think that it would his would be it would make more sense if it was like oh he's totally horribly disfigured because he's a nice guy very suddenly oh he got his face fucked up and now he's a mean dude. I could do that too, but the thing is like if I told you three years ago that in a major Marvel movie Julia Louis Dreyfus would be playing Madame Hydra, would you have believed me? I don't know who that is. She played Hold Elaine on. on Seinfeld. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> I looking up Madam Hydra or Julia Louis Dreyfus. Uh, I, I was gonna put look up Elaine on Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck? Is it? Would you say her name is it? Julia Louis she... Dreyfus? Julia Louis Dreyfus. Yeah, she plays. Uh, Val in Falcon and the Winter Soldier and in Black Widow's post credit scene. She's the one who sends Yelena to kill Hawkeye. But that would be okay. like it, it, like, would you have believed that she could play a villain? Like, that's the she, thing. It's like she's had some work, or am I looking at bit. the wrong person? Do you want me to just bring it up on mine and screen share? Yeah, but don't show me an old picture. Show me a new one. Yeah, I'll show you her. Dreyfus. Marvel. I'll show you her in the movie. Okay, let me screen share. Screen share. Share. There we go. Right here. Yeah, I'm definitely looking at the wrong person. Um, Okay. Yeah, but like she was on Seinfeld who? for nine years. She's Madam Hydra. Oh, like she's so a, she's gonna have an accent. No, she's leader of the Thunderbolts. No, she the didn't Hydra have pe- the Hydra aren't the Hydra people the the Nazi people. Yeah, but they they kind of abandoned the fact that they're all German besides Age of Ultron. Oh, okay. Yeah, they. Uh, but she she's in. She's doing that. Like I, I think anyone be could play a bad a villain, person. But, yeah. Um, the last two movies of Phase Six were also announced. Um, the first one is May second, twenty twenty five, and that will be directed by Destin Daniel Cretton or Daniel Destin Daniel Cretton, who directed Shang Chi. It is called Avengers: The Kang Dynasty. That's cool. Is it going to be Kang the is Conqueror that- is the bad guy? Okay. Then part two of that movie comes out November 7th, 2025. So they're doing both parts in the same year. 
Oh. Avengers Secret Wars on November 7th, 2025. Okay. Um, and there are also other movies dated in that time period, and there are also Disney Plus series with general release window, but they didn't announce those. Um, hmm. So, and they also uh, announced dates for the first four Phase Seven movies, but nothing to talk about there. We can't speculate on that. Um, so, yeah, they, there's a lot going on there. Um, now, so that, that's all for Marvel. You, how do you feel about all the Marvel stuff that they've announced? <laughs> I don't know. I, it's not as exciting as it used to be. There's so much uh, of it coming out. I mean, I'm excited for the black. I think that'll be really cool. But at this point, it's like, oh, another one. Oh, another one. Okay. See, I think that's it. They're not introducing enough new characters. Mm -hmm. Like even Phase Four or Phase Three had like it was split up where it was existing new existing new i think i i it, it was far more interesting to me to go and watch um the new doctor strange movie because they uh, they comic sized it like they made it seem so much more like the comic books were like just crazy off those things were actually happening and they put these like i don't know it was just neat i mean come on he was a zombie yeah, that was that was really cool. I, I really liked a lot of people didn't like that movie. I really liked it. I did too. It reminded me of like actually reading the comic books and stuff. Because that's what happens is the crazy stuff. Like those are the memories at least. So right. I think that they need to start going down that that road a little bit more. Well, I think they're going to. I think that and that's the thing too. That date in February of 2025 that doesn't have a movie yet. Um before um what's it called? Before we get to Kang Dynasty is going I think that has to be Doctor Strange 3 oh, okay. because the, the post credit scene of Doctor Strange 2 is Clea coming to him and being like you started an incursion I'm not so, like a super fan of Doctor Strange but I do think that like I'm far more interested in those movies currently just because or more, more of his stuff coming out because of how fantastical it is and it's like, like he became a fan favorite very quickly, I think, after his fight with Thanos in Infinity yeah, War. His character, him as a character is less interesting than the cinematic stuff that's going on. Or I like guess the, like the visuals that go with it are yes, more interesting than watching. Than him. Are you happy, Dr. Str <laughs> like that started to piss me off in that movie where like, everyone's asking him, are you like, I don't give a shit if he's happy. Like just go I really be, don't go, go be a dead guy. Come on. Yeah. Go go kill something. I don't care what it yeah, is. Just like, find something and we, kill it. Like can they just do the Marvel zombie movie? The whole They're doing movie. a TV show. They're doing a TV show. They are, and it's just on Disney Plus. Movies? Yes. TVMA. I have that written down here too somewhere. I now skipped all the animation exciting. stuff. Oh, I skipped all the animation. animation. I want it yeah, live action. I want a TV live action. I want a live action movie. It's and I want um you know like I want to I want to see what happens when the X Men goes again go against um like vampires or something I don't know just something crazy. The Marvel Zombies show is 2024. It is a spinoff of What If, where they okay. did the Marvel Zombies episode. It's an entire show okay. though. It's a team of survivors in the zombie apocalypse that include Death Dealer, Red Guardian, Black Widow, but Yelena's version. Hawkeye, Kate's version, Miss Marvel, and Shang-Chi. At some point in the show, Icarus becomes a zombie. Although, can we address that? How the fuck does that work? Like, you watch Eternals, right? Eternals, yeah. They're not animal. They're not organic matter. The the Eternals. Oh. Yeah, no, no. He's They're like robot. Yeah, how the fuck does he become a zombie? uh they'll explain it in the movie it's gonna be oh okay here's the calling it it's a um it's a virus from the multiverse okay i could all right whatever sure fine um also in 2024 i have x-men news too uh this is not x-men this is spider-man news first though um it's a prequel to captain america civil war about spider-man getting his powers and being trained to be a hero um it is, it's going to have him teaming up with Daredevil, with Charlie Cox reprising as Daredevil again. 
Um, and he we're gonna be we're gonna meet the MCU version of Norman Osborn, Harry Osborn, Amadeus Cho, Lonnie Lincoln, and um, Niku Minoru, Minaru, um, who was on the Runaways, um, and also an MCU variant of Doc Ock, Scorpion, Chameleon, and Rhino. We're all be in that show. That's in 2024 as well. Uh, late 2023 is X Men's return. Yay. X, did you watch the show, the classic animated show, X Men 97? Well, it's called X Men back in the day, but now nope. it's X Men 97. Nope. Yeah, it's that show picking oh. up exactly where it left off with Professor X leaving Earth to go face the Shi'ar Empire. Can they, just hurry, takes- can they just hurry up and go and do a wall, another Wolverine? I know that he's not going to do it, but. Uh, there's some good candidates out there right now. I think he's going to show up in Secret Wars. You think that would be? Um, I think Hugh Jackman shows up in Secret Wars. I think that would be like I was totally against Professor X in in Multiverse of Madness. I thought that was cool. For me, at least, I think the perfect send off for Patrick Stewart was Logan. Oh, okay. Like that scene right before he dies, where the where X twenty four is standing over him, and he thinks it's it's his you know his version of Logan, mm-hmm. and he's he's can he's he has that moment of lucidity where he's like, I don't deserve to have this level of happiness right now because of all of the shit I did in my life, and then he gets stabbed to the chest. Oh, like I think that was a yeah. perfect send off for him because like Professor X is not a good guy. Let's not you know pretend he is. Like he fights a proxy war with children. Well, okay. Like, that's but, like that's the entire but he's plot Professor of the X-Men. X. <laughs> like it's it's like did you watch uh, Crimes of Grindelwald? Or no, not Crimes of Grindelwald. Uh, Secrets of Dumbledore yet? The new uh, Fantastic no. Beasts movie. Okay, don't. But here here's the problem with my. I, I saw it in theaters opening night in an empty theater, and I'm sitting there and I'm watching it and I'm I was texting Peter because it's like it's fucking ridiculous this movie and it ends with. I'm going to spoil it for you, um, but don't worry. You're not missing too much. It ends with, um, there's this deer thing that was never mentioned before in any of Harry Potter that can look at someone and tell if they're pure of heart. Oh, yeah. They just, I, I saw that, that they introduced it. In... And then it's like, they go to the Wizard UN with this deer thing, because apparently that's a thing that they never addressed either. Uh, but there's a Wizard UN. They go there with that, and there's an, an election held. Somehow Grindelwald gets on the ticket to run for president of the Wizard UN, and this, and he kills the deer thing and puts a like and uses magic on it to make it look like he's the one who's pure of heart. And then it's like, well, what's the point of voting if this deer thing just decides anyway? But mm. whatever. And then the, the there's a second deer thing that's also there um and that one sees Dumbledore and declares him that and I'm sitting there in the theater I'm like bullshit yeah because number one everything that happens in this movie is because this guy thinks with his dick and doesn't want to give up on his boyfriend and the other thing is like 90 years down the road and the fucking deer they say this multiple times the deer can see the past present and future like 90 years down the road you got a 16 year old that he's raising up to to to, to face Voldemort. killed yeah. yeah and it's like the only reason he doesn't die is pure happenstance right. it's like like that sequence in the I, train station even, at the end is like little, oh shit there's you never ever been like an implication that he is considered pure of heart the whole reason that snape dies the way snape dies is to show that he's not this big right. almighty good guy that we all thought he was right like and even Snape's not a good guy either. Like, let's be honest there. It's just a guy right. who wanted to fuck someone. And then it's like, you know, oh, well, I couldn't fuck her. So I'm going to stop being a Nazi and hope she doesn't get killed. Like, I'm okay if her husband gets killed, but I don't want her to get killed. And it, that doesn't right. work. So then he's like, I'm just going to verbally and physically abuse her son for the better part of seven years. Mm-hmm. And then and the whole thing's fucking ridiculous. Anyway, um, X-Men 97 is coming in late 2023 if you want to see the escapades of Professor X in space. Um, So what do you know about the Warner Brothers Discovery merger? Absolutely nothing. Okay, so Warner Brothers, you know, one of the big studios um, was owned by AT&T. 
AT&T acquired Discovery, which is its own company, um, in an effort to not be voided out by antitrust, Discovery and Warner Brothers got spun, spun out into its own company and is now no longer under AT AT&T, but it's now Warner Brothers Discovery. But Discovery has taken over day-to-day -day operations of the company. Um, and Discovery is looking at what's going on there and is like, what the fuck? So there's a lot of stuff getting moved around, canceled, whatever. Um, one of the first things that was affected by this when, when the merger took place was there was a Wonder Twins movie they were making for HBO Max for $75 million. And if you're asking yourself, who the fuck wants to see a Wonder Twins movie that bad that they're going to spend $75 million on a Wonder Twins movie? You're not alone. They canceled the movie. Um, but they have, at this point, shot, finished shooting, finished post-production on and are ready to release Batgirl with Leslie Grace from In the Heights as Batgirl, um, J.K. Simmons reprising as Commissioner Gordon. Um, and yeah, um, so that's all done. It's done, ready to be released. They announced this week the movie was being canceled and they're never releasing it. Super. Because they are... Um, trying to cut $300 million in taxes. Okay. So they so in an effort to do that, there's a $95 million movie they have canned. Um, and there have been mixed reports about test screenings regarding it. I have yet to see a source that did not express displeasure at casting Leslie Grace in the lead to say the movie had issues in test screenings. Um, but Here's part of the problem. The talent involved found out the movie was not being released when Variety put out the article. Oh. So the directors and the lead actress and Michael Keaton and all these other people who were involved um, all found out via Variety that the movie that they did that is never being released. Now, if you're Leslie Grace, I think you have a right to be pissed because you're like in your mid twenties and you spent a good amount of time training for this role, doing this role and being ready for reshoots on this role and giving up other roles to do it. And the same goes for the directors who directed Bad Boys for Life and then also directed Miss Marvel. That's pretty shit. Yeah. Um, and they're trying to cut out that money from the budget. And the only thing I can find consistently for a reason why they weren't thrilled about it is because the movie was $95 million and not really a spectacle. And they couldn't put it out in theaters to be a spectacle. And they didn't want to put it on HBO Max because they didn't want to put a, a $95 million movie only on streaming. Okay. Um, then we get to Ezra Miller. Um, who plays the Flash in the movies. Um, Ezra Miller, who was cast in first Batman v Superman. Um, oh, because super. Didn't he get in trouble? Oh, yeah. He's been consistently getting in trouble. It's not even like a one and done thing. The first thing was he assaulted a fan at an event in 2020 in Iceland. Um, then last year he had two or earlier this year, and I think it's all unraveled really this year. He had two separate restraining orders placed against him by people in Hawaii that he assaulted in nightclubs, which, all right, maybe he's just got a substance abuse problem. That's fine. Um, <laughs> which no, I'm not, I'm not making light of it or trying to make it like a joke, but like, if, if that's the case and, and, he, and, and they're just going to clubs and getting, incredibly drunk and then getting into fights that's something a studio can work around because it's not the first time they've had an alcoholic or someone on drugs in movies like that's definitely something they can work around then came the uh, the grooming allegations that two separate families of underage girls came forward and said that he was um starting up inappropriate relationships with their very young 12, 13 year old daughters. Mm -hmm. um, then came the report that he is, they haven't been able to serve those subpoena, the, uh, the restraining orders to him 
because he's living on a compound in Vermont with drugs, weapons, and bullets laying around, as well as a family with underage children there, including a one-year-old baby who was reported to have been chewing on a bullet of live ammunition that was laying on the ground. Then came the report. <laughs> it just keeps getting worse. Then came the report that at, in Iceland, when he was there, he was running a cult. Yeah, I was going to say that first one sounds a little culty. Um, now it's a full cult. And then also in Iceland, he was part of a band. Um, and one of the rules of the band was that if you are over the age of 21, you have to bring a minor with you to the show. Otherwise, you will not be allowed in. Yeah. Now, all of that said, the Flash movie is still on track for release in July. Mm -hmm. There's no talk of moving it to HBO Max. There's no talk of canceling it. The movie costs $200 million to make. If you're looking for a $300 million movie to, to, to cut out of your budget and, and declare as a total loss, well, there it is. Mm -hmm. Like, do, like that, that'll solve that problem. And if you really want to pull it up, pay Grant over at the CW a couple million dollars to bump it up uh, a little bit higher, reshoot all of Ezra's stuff, replace him with the guy on the CW, and then can the movie. Yeah. Like, it, it's just, it, it's, 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 it's dumb. Like, I, so, I, I don't, when, I don't this, understand. when they're done with this guy, because they will be, I mean, who do you want? Who As would the be Flash? the next Flash, yeah. I mean, I've been for them integrating in characters from the CW. Because at this point, it's not just me. I'm not the only person who watches the shows on the CW. The ratings will suggest that there are at least 20 other people who watch the shows on the CW. <laughs> I think we have a higher listenership on this show than the CW does on any given week of their shows. Notwithstanding, I think that um, bringing in Grant would have been a good idea at the beginning. Mm -hmm. At this point, he's been doing it for nine years. I totally understand if he's done with it now. Um, and I can, I can look at that and be, and, and the thing is too, it's like, um, if they're going to cast someone, I don't want to know who they are beforehand. Like, I don't want to have seen them in another movie unless it's like a small role in some indie bullshit. Like, I don't want to know them until I see this movie. Like, okay. look at what Marvel did with, you know, when you they were cast. Like an unknown person. Right. Like, Tom Holland was not a known entity when he got cast as Spider Man. Um, mm -hmm. Chris Hemsworth was not a known entity when he got cast. Robert Downey Jr., he was known, but. He was on the outs with Hollywood because of his substance abuse problems and his jail time and, and all the other things to the point where famously Favreau couldn't get insurance to cover him uh -huh. for Iron Man. So they had to take that massive risk on their own to do that. Um, and who the fuck is Jeremy Renner even now? Like, it, it, it's that kind of thing where it's like, bring in people I don't know. I don't want to know who they are in advance. But if you are going to do something where you just want someone for crossover events, um, I would say use, I would say use Grant. Okay. Be like, hey, do you want $2 million to show up for a Justice League movie and, and play, um, and play the Flash? Yeah, sure. All right. Like that, that would be, I think the easiest way to do it. Um, and just retire it for a little bit because you can't, you, like, this is ridiculous. Um, I, I, I don't know how you can release this movie and market it to families mm -hmm. with this guy in the lead. Yeah. Um, he could, it, kids trust the trust this guy yeah. he's a superhero just go go along with him um and then also it's like the the amount that was that i think part of it is how much is riding on the flash going forward um because of the fact that the flash is going to use flashpoint the way flashpoint in the comics was to rewrite the dc universe the way the way they wanted to um, where it's like Ben Affleck is no longer Batman after Flashpoint. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Keaton is coming back and he's going to be the Batman going forward. Um, okay. So much so that right now they're reshooting Aquaman because Aquaman was supposed to come out after the Flash, but now it's coming out before and test audiences don't understand why Michael Keaton's there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're, they're, they're changing that 
and doing it that way. It, it's it's a it's a weird kind of situation, I think. Like they don't really want to have to. They don't want to address it because they don't want to be like. And at this point, they've doubled and tripled and quadrupled down so many times that they just look stupid, mm-hmm. regardless of the outcome. Yeah. Because they should have, they, they probably should have ditched Ezra Miller when the first restraining orders were given, not in Hawaii, but the first ones with 12-year-old girls being pried with alcohol and drugs against their parents' wishes. Yep. Um, so that's a real downer right there. To, we're not gonna, I, I got one other thing before we, we wrap up there. Um, that you might be interested in. Um, have you seen any of the trailers for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Negative. Um, they are the new Pokemon games coming out this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, November 18th, I think, is the release date. They will be the first games of Generation 9. Now, did you play Legends Arceus by any chance? Uh, Arceus, Arceus, how the fuck you pronounce it? I it came out in January. No. Um, it is kind of open world, but not really. Um, that's what I heard. So yeah. That's what I saw when I was looking into it. I Because I was thinking it. about it. it. It'll probably be on sale on Black Friday. So if you do really want to get it, you can get that. But if you're waiting for a price cut, it's never going to happen. Um, okay. Because Pokemon games only ever appreciate in value. Um, oh. I was at GameStop recently and I saw they had a copy of, of Diamond, like original Diamond for the DS for $75. Oh. Not in a box, just a standalone cartridge for ninety-five for $75. Um, so in, in Legends Arceus, you can you, like, you have this little like hub town that you live in. Hmm. Um, and then you can go to this gate and it's like, where do you want to go? And there are like five big areas and they're big. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're pretty big and you can go there, but you know, you, you do that. This new game is according to them at this point, true open world. You start at the first town. You can walk anywhere you want on the map. Mm-hmm. You can do the gyms in any order you want. There's mm. four player co-op. Um, the legend is your traversal thing so there's no bike the legend serves as your bike there's no surfing the legend serves as your as your boat there's no flying flying the the legend serves as your your flight there's probably a fast travel but the the legend will serve as like in in omega ruby alpha sapphire um the it'll serve as your what's it called the fuck i don't even play golf um the legend will serve as your, um, as your like flying around the map thing. Um, there are new Pokemon as always. The legend, little... like, what do you mean the legend? The cover legends, the two box legends. The legendary po- Pokemon. Yeah. Okay, that's I did not. Okay. Yeah, because um, they look kind of like bikes when you look at their pictures. <laughs> um, and it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. You're gonna ride them like a bike. All right. Moving on. Um, the, what, what's the name of it? So I can look it up. Scarlet and Violet. Hang on, let me. Pokemon. Let me just send you to the Sarabi site. Scarlet. Net. Violet. Net. You feel like bikes. <laughs> yeah, you you don't see that. Don't see that. Hang on. Oh, they don't look to... like bikes. I... <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're designed to. Okay, I when they're standing, you... they don't look like bikes. I think you've not seen a bike. No, I have seen. I know what a bike looks like, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, hang on. Let me see if I can find a thing about how yes. how they how they. Why did you, you send me one that it's supposed to look like a bike? Right. Because let me. None of these look like a bike. Let me let me see if there's a like I'm on here. Um, new Pokemon. Um, here, okay. So I'm gonna send you a link. They both look like they have one giant chest boob. Yes, that's the that's the wheel. That's the wheel. Yeah, let me send you a link. Hang on, I'm gonna use the chat here. I'm gonna send you a link. 
as listeners can tell, we're using Zoom. So it was a little bit of a learning curve on, on doing things. Um, there, I sent you a link. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and you can see. I was going to say that first one's really cute. That doesn't look like a bike at all. No, that's that's the, the grass um, starter. These are the sprig, new Pokemon. Sprig, sprig, Sprigatito. Yeah, that's the grass starter. Um, down at the bottom. Yeah. You can see they have the um, what's it called? They you have can the start uh, with an ice type Pokemon this time. No, no, no! Only the first three of the starters. Oh. The the little cat, the little like dragon thing, and the little and the little duck. Everything else underneath, they're just Pokemon that are in the region. So when you're not on your bike or your Pokemon, yeah. Um, does it walk around next to you looking normal or does it look like the bite? Now, here's the thing. They didn't show that for those two. There is following in the same way that like Sword and Shield had following if you went to the uh, islands in the post game. Mm -hmm. But they didn't they didn't show any of of how that these two look when they're walking around. I'm assuming that when you're not riding them, they look like, you know, normal. Do they at least? like move their feet the wheels move only the wheels move so well, so, well like when you when you're on like like the you don't see the feet on the on the like the thing is it's designed where it's yeah like, you do you see the feet right now i can look at them. they're right there well they're i think holding, that like, no that's they don't move they no, hold they're on the wheels they hold on to their chests and their yeah. chests yeah, it's, 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 it's holding its tits so that way it doesn't like you know have any accidents it's fine don't think about it too hard um then it's there is dumb. i'm disappointed <laughs> do you how do you feel about fido scroll up like two Bye. to the little fido the little uh, that's adorable thing. yeah and then the other it's, one everybody's really just like. gonna name it puggle yeah, and then the one right above it, Smoliv, a lot of people really like, too. That's pretty cute. Um, I and like then the other... little piggy. The pig? Yeah, the piggy's oh. cute. Lechonk? Yeah, that's adorable. I'm going to start <laughs> calling my dog that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I already call him Chonky. Now he's going to be Lechonk. <laughs> um, uh. Some other interesting things. You know Wooper? Whooper? Yeah, the little blue guy that was in gold and silver. Um, Whooper. Yeah, it evolves into Quagsire. Yeah, little, yeah it's getting a regional form um, oh. that is brown. It, it's poison brown I, type. Yeah, I'm looking at it, and it's got bones out of its head. Yeah. Um, it looks a little bit more like an axolotl. Um, then there are this, there's a new type of evolution gimmick. Um, now, I don't know how deeply you went with this, but in X and Y, there was Mega Evolution. Uh -huh. In Sun and Moon, there was Z moves, which were incredibly powerful moves um, that you could use once per battle. In um, Sword and Shield, there was Gigantamax, which was Dynamax, whatever. Sure. Right. I thought I thought there was a T in there somewhere, but no, I, I think maybe, you're right. Maybe you're right. I think it's Giganta, like G I G A N T A Max. Giganta, like gi yeah. gigantic. Yeah, because there's Dynamax, which is regular, and it gets really big, and mm -hmm. then there's Giganta, or maybe I'm wrong. It's possible I'm wrong, but um, there was that. This new one has something called Terrastal. um, which is every Pokemon can do it in the game um and the there's this terrestrial it's called terrestrialization okay which sounds like what it does if it's trying to keep from having kids and terrestrial um, is is spelled exactly how it sounds <laughs> i thought i would be wrong <laughs> um, but it turns them into crystals and they get a little power boost and they change types yeah. sometimes it looks super sparkly and i love yeah. sparkles so yay um like. there are raid battles like in um uh sword and shield where you can do raids to get the dynamax and the gigantamax which i maybe you're right but 
I've been pronouncing it this I way for so long. I think you're right. I oh, don't I am? Know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Either. <laughs> um, I've been pronouncing it this way for so long and no one's corrected me. So I'm just going to say yeah. it's probably right. Let's find out. <laughs> well, hang on. I could, I'm, I'm on the site for it already. I'm going to bring it up um, right here. Uh, G-I-G-A-N- G-I-G-A-N-T-A, Max. Giagantamax. 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 No, it's not Gia, because that'd be G-I-A, G-A-N-T-A. Gigantamax is how I would pronounce it. it, That's a J. No. No, it's it's not GIF or JIF. Yes, it is. (laughs) When it is spelled out, when it is spelled out on how to pronounce it, that is a hard J. That's the, well, that's there's how no way it's giga- work. There's, there's no way it's gigantic. That's why they're spelled that. That's why you write them out this way. All right. Well, it is, it's G A I. So G G J J J Gigantamax. All right. Well, I'm uh, I'm, I'm going. All right. Well, whatever. But uh, <laughs> in this new thing, in these raid battles, uh, you get you get the chance of catching a Terra. Terra style Pokemon that has um, a different type. So, like Eevee, the one they use in the example is Pikachu, will be. <laughs> I guess all your 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 message to explain the spelling. Um, the the issue is if you look at like um, uh, Pikachu, Pikachu is a flying type. When he okay. is. When he's that instead of electric, Eevee is um, either grass or water, depending on the version. So there are some that are, you know, different um, depending on that. So it could be cool. I think it could be cool. I'm going to be cautiously optimistic because every time they've done this in the past, um, the game has been underwhelming and they sell differently from what it actually is. And they're saying that every single type of Pokemon has this is this. Well, everyone can can go crystal form and get the cool hat, but not okay. every one of them will change type. Mm, okay. Um, but this so doesn't like, look. They didn't give um, this to a hat. They gave them balloons. Well, that could be. It, it, it's just something on their head. Oh, they all have their own hat. Yeah, they all. They have all a have a different hat. And the hat tells you what type it is. Pokemon hats. I don't know that's what you're going to get. Oh, you're going to get. No, it did not give me what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that, like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, remember the move Hidden Power that Unknown has in, um, and that's its oh. only move? Okay, well, the way that, the way that Hidden Power works is every Pokemon, it's, it's a neutral type, but every Pokemon has a different type that, that Hidden Power will be. And it's completely random. It feels like it could be that. And if that's the case, this is going to get annoying very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, especially considering for, like, I understand why they're doing this. It's designed to mix up competitive a little bit. Um, because I think the competitive metagame hasn't had a good grenade thrown in it in a while. Um, to the point where they just started allowing mythical Pokemon in competitive play. Just to be like, yeah, fuck it. Let's see what happens. Okay. Um, hmm. I, I don't think that is necessarily a good thing just to do for the sake of it, but it is better than like, you know, just doing it differently. Now, the gyms, allegedly, you can do in any order you want. Um, it's unknown if that's going to be like, if you go to what would logically be the eighth gym and fight the gym leader, um, will he just come at you with level 50 Pokemon and just rock your shit? Or will it be like so. they're scaled? Where it's like you can go to any one of them, and whichever one's the first one will have one team. And then depending on what order it is, you get a different team each time. No. You just, you just want them to come in and just like curb stomp you? Yeah, absolutely. Like in uh, Breath of the Wild, if you would decide to go fight Ganon without getting anything, it's not scaled to whatever you got. It's just can- Ganon's like, oh, you're here to fight me? That's cute. And he goes, yeah. oh, let's kick the shit out of you regardless. Yeah. So that way you can like, you can choose. I mean, because don't you have to. Like the lore of the game is that you have to like complete them in an order, right? 
What do you mean? Don't you have to collect the gym badges in a specific You'd... kind of order for your I don't think or so. Something? I don't think that so. That was what I thought the, the lore was. Well, I don't think that's the case. I think that, like, it depends on, like, if, if you were in, um, well, no, because even in what's it called, in, um, in Red and Blue, you didn't have to fight them in the right order. Oh, okay. Because you could fight um, Sabrina before you fight Koga. So I like the idea that you could you could go around get all your Pokemon all real tough out in the wild areas or whatever and mm -hmm. then go and like beat the big tough bad guy at the biggest gym and then move your way down and then it'll be super duper easy at the end and maybe at the end they just go oh my gosh I bow my hat and then people can decide if which direction they want to go I don't um, think it'll be that I think it'll be the way that it'll it'll be scaled okay and that's kind of cool too because then you can go in and play it a few more and you can play it different ways because you can start different locations Right, and it will be interesting for speed running too. I think, um, because like if you look at like I've been I've been looking at a lot of speed running stuff lately. Cause I had that idea I told you about with the speed running show, um, and I was looking into like um, Emerald. You, you played Emerald or, or, or Ruby and Sapphire at some point, right? No, nope. way back. You never played Ruby and Sapphire. I've seen it. Okay, um, the. That what speedrunners will do is they'll pick Mudkip as their first one because Mudkip gives you a type advantage to three of the first four gyms. Okay. Because you get a type advantage over rock with a water type. You get a, a type advantage over, um, what was it, in um, electric in the, in the third one. And you get a type advantage over fire in the fourth one. Okay. Um, the fifth is normal. The second is fighting. The thing is, in that game, you don't have to fight the second gym at any point in the game until you get to the Elite Four. Okay. Like, until you get to the gate of the Elite Four, there's nothing that says you have to fight the second gym. Oh. There's, there's no wall or anything. So you can do it hmm. second, you can do it third, you can do it fourth. The thing is, the team is not scaled. So the longer you wait in the game to do that, the better off you are. Because if you do it second, it's going to be tough. If you do it fifth, you can just throttle right through with three attacks. Okay. So it's an interesting kind of thing. It's, it's, this is the strategy that goes into it. Are there going to be more regional Pokemon? I would assume so. Um, it's just a little, like, this year is weird because there was no E3. Uh, E3. Oh. Um, because, like, if you think back, like, E3 was when in X and Y they revealed... Like Sylveon, oh, yeah. they revealed the the fairy type. They revealed Mega Evolution. Mm -hmm. They there's been nothing like that this year. Didn't so like this weekend wasn't an E3 this year. Well, I think what happened was a lot of the studios did their own kind of little things for the summer because this time of year is important for releasing the rest of what you're doing for the rest of the year. Okay. Because it's like, what is coming this holiday season? What are we doing yeah. this Christmas? And this is not just a way to transition to us talking about the Christmas special that we're going to do this year. But a good um, transition anyway. It worked out. <laughs> but like, that's the thing, because it's like, that's why San Diego Comic-Con has taken up the role it has, not just for comics, but for the film industry and everything at large. Like mm -hmm. Prey that came out this weekend, the new Predator movie, which is mm -hmm. fantastic, by the way. I watched it last night. Is it good? Because I, really was, I was not super convinced that it would be good, but I really like Predator movies. It is really and good. the alien movies and yeah. You know. It is really okay. good. I think you'll like it. It's it's worth a watch. It's only is it it's worth only it like in an theaters hour. or it's I not wait? in theaters. Oh, okay, never mind. It's, Perfect. It's only on Hulu. Oh. Um do we have to rent it or is it free with Hulu free. subscription? Free with your Hulu subscription. Um, but like that had its premiere at San Diego Comic Con. Um like Clerks 3 screened the first five minutes at San Diego Comic-Con. That's coming out in September. We're at this point where we're at the midway point of the year. So if you want to debut your new stuff, debut it in San Diego. So that way you get you can start your six-month marketing campaign from there. And it's kind of the same thing with video games, where that beginning of June date is a great opportunity to be like, and here's what we're doing for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. um, until at the end of the year, you can do something small for like, here's what we're doing in the beginning of the next year. 
but that's where they release all their stuff. Here's all the and, stuff that you should be putting on your Christmas list. Right, exactly. And it's like this year, the only real games that I'm have any interest in is, I mean, really for me, it's just um, Midnight Suns from Marvel, which is like, do you ever play XCOM? No, but I've watched um, people play XCOM. It's like that, but with Marvel characters. Oh, okay. So it's, but like the, the, like the mystical, like dark, Mar- like, you know, Moon Knight, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, Moon Knight, we forgot before. That was one of the shows in phase four. Anyway, um, but like that's coming. There's this Pokemon game coming. Nintendo really doesn't have anything big coming, which is kind of weird. Yeah. So like Breath of the Wild 2 isn't until next year because um, mm-hmm. that got bumped back. And then I feel like there was one other one too. Um no, I don't think that's it. I think that's it. Um, the Christmas season coming up. <laughs> yeah. Or the Christmas episode. Stuff, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, before we get to Way that, less what, smooth. <laughs> what video games, before we get to the Christmas episode, I have one question for you. What old video games would you like to see ported to current gen consoles? Oh, lots of the 64 stuff. Um... Did and you I get the have... Switch Online expansion for that? No. Yeah, there's an add-on for Switch I Online. Know. You don't want to pay I for know. it. I, 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 I know that when I when I do do it, it's gonna take up a lot of time. Right. And I, right now, I have a lot of other stuff going on. So once I have some more time, um, then yes, <laughs> I'll be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> they just added Pokemon Snap to it. Okay. I almost got it just for that. Um, but yeah, so N64 games. I wouldn't mind seeing. I don't. I don't even know what's actually available, so you can tell me if I'm wrong. I wouldn't okay. mind seeing all Super Smashes. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing. Melee is uh, not available on anything right now. I'm surprised they haven't ported that because I said a pretty big fan base. Because I mean, like the suit, the new Super Smash is cool and everything, or the newest one is, but um. You know, I don't know. There's a special place in everybody's heart for those older ones. And then right. um, every single Mario Kart game ever. That would be great. You <laughs> might want to invest in um, Mario Kart 8. Yeah. Because they have a ton of... Tra- I have my Switch right here, actually. And I, well, the game's not in it, so we're not going to do that. But they have um, Mario Kart 8 for the Switch is Mario Kart 8 that came out for the Wii U, plus the DLC pack that came out. And they also have a booster pack, which is another $25 on top of that. But it adds in 10 more cups. Okay. So I... by the end of this, I think every track that's ever existed on every Mario Kart game will be on that one. Okay. Um, uh, Donkey Kong Jr. and stuff like that. The ones that were on the Game Boy would be cool. Oh, yeah. I forgot about those. You know how much my band was as a kid on Game Boy was Pokemon? (laughs) (laughs) I can't tell you how many hours went into like Donkey Kong Jr. Like, yeah, yeah. before I reset my Ruby. But that back in the day, it's not fair because back in the day, we all had like three games. Yeah. Like, if our parents got us that many, like, I clocked 300 hours in Pokemon Ruby before I reset it. Like, That's crazy. Yeah. It was over like a decade. Like, let's not be like, I did it in the first year. Like, mm-hmm. no, it was like, I bought, I got the game when it came out in 2003. And then it was maybe 2013 when I reset it. Mm-hmm. But it was 300 hours that I had clocked at that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I don't think that there's anything else that I'm like, um, um, some of the old stuff. Oh, Spyro, uh, Crash. They have all those. those are they, they all those. on there yes yeah, on the, the older you know, ones though spyro one two and three crash okay. one two and three are both I didn't on the know switch that. oh yeah. my goodness well that's yeah. exciting i'll have to go get those yeah uh, spyro held up very well when i bought that i got that for the playstation but it held up very well i remember it i remember playing it on the psp oh uh, See, um, and that's the thing too. The PSP had a very good back catalog of old games, and people don't talk about that that much. Star Wars is Bounty Hunter. That's not out. I don't know. There's a bunch of Star Wars games I've gotten. I know 
Republic Commando got ported to the Switch. Uh, Episode 1 Racer got ported to the Switch. Jedi Outcast 1 and 2 both got ported to the Switch. The Bounty Hunter game, I... I was never particularly good at games and I would get, I would get really, really far and then I'd get stuck on something. And then if I couldn't move on and then I had soccer practice, I'd have to shut it all down. And this was like before we had an understanding of like that you could have a thing that would save your game. So this was just that I would spend where I would sit down and I would play to get to however far that I did. And then once it was gone, my game was gone and I started from the beginning again. (laughs) <laughs> that reminded me. Do you remember how many fucking Game Boy games didn't have save files? They had yes. codes you had to remember. Oh my yes. god! To think this was our life at one point, where you had to sit there, you had to write down these ridiculous fucking codes to remember where you were in a game because you had to put the password in. And maybe, and maybe you you got lucky, and you had parents that were like understanding of like you know. Um, oh no, I didn't. Like the internet and the electronics <laughs> and things like that. Maybe some kids got lucky with that. And, but I remember learning, oh my God, are you kidding me? I could have had a, I could have been saving my, um, I could have even saved my 64, like my uh, Mario 64. Yeah. And no, uh, no, I, I could have been saving my, uh, you know, oh, yep. I remember finding that and being like, idiots, yeah. of course there was. <laughs> <laughs> See, like for me, like my, we had a PlayStation one when I was a kid because my dad used to love playing sports games. Um, and that had I the did. widest, that had the widest array of sports games. Um, those all had save files. And we had this, I, I, and, and again, the my amount of played memory on the PC, changed. all of, uh, all the, um, uh, NFL games, all of them. Oh, I, I have. I, I have very recently broken the the cycle, the cycle of abuse that is buying Madden every year on release day, oh, um, just for the sake of buying it. He, I think he stopped in 2018. He stopped buying because he was like, I, I, I was, I, I, you know, this is the sixth year in a row I've not played the game after buying. Yeah. Yeah, that's my problem. Too. Like, and the thing is, too, I say that, but earlier this year, I bought on um, what's it called on Steam. I bought um, NHL Manager. That's um, different. Which is it's a managing a game. That's not. Yeah, did you ever play Out of the Park Baseball? It's kind of like that, where it's your your G, it's GM simulator basically. It's not like an actual like yeah, it's a managing sports game. simulator. It's not a sports game. Um, but like the. For me, if I were to pick games that were to come, you know, here, I think that Nintendo is sitting on a gold mine in not releasing Paper Mario, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, Paper Mario, uh, Super Paper Mario as a set on the Switch. Oh, oh yeah, people love those. I never like, played. People <laughs> loved those. And the thing is, too, I've I played... watched people play since and stuff, and like I like watching it and everything, but now sometimes after watching, other people play um if 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 you've watched enough you're you're not interested in playing again (laughs) it's like i i i don't know if you ever um did you ever you never played it but like so many gamecube games their graphics hold up astoundingly well yes like it is unreal and you know what i learned recently too do you know why the playstation 2 had had the longevity it did no the playstation 2 had the same number of buttons as the Wii and the same hardware specs. Oh. So when developers were making Wii games, they're like, well, fuck it. We, we have the dev kit for the PlayStation 2 and we don't have to downscale the game. We can just port it over and just change the change all of that. Hmm. So if, if you played a Wii game and a PlayStation 2 game of the same game, it was basically the same engine it was running on. Oh. So that's why the PlayStation 2 lasted as long as it did because as long as Nintendo was supporting the Wii, the PlayStation 2 had games going to it do you remember the pokemon game on the gamecube the one uh Coliseum? yeah that game that one i wouldn't mind playing again awesome. that was a um game. yeah um Ooh, or the 007 channel. that was on the gamecube i remember it being so tomorrow never dies shitty but i would want to play it again i heard golden eyes getting ported um, maybe it was Goldeneye then. No, Goldeneye was for the N64. That was the one oh, that okay. Peter brought with him to college. At, okay, or we, or we bought one. at J Street. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't remember if we bought it or if he still had his old copy, but we used to play that in multiplayer on the N64. 
You were there for that. Maybe. Yeah, you definitely were there for that. Because I probably using... thought it was boring to watch and walked out. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I, but I would watch for Super Smash. I just, yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised they don't, because like, I wonder how, I, I, I could look into it, but like, did you pick up last year when it was out, the or late 2020 um, into 2021, the 3D All-Stars Mario game? No. It was, it is probably the best money I've spent in a while. I have it right here in my little. 3D. I can't see it. It's my, this is my, uh, what's it called? My, I uh, see, I can see the case. I can't see your yeah. game though. Oh yeah, I got All-Stars a lot of games. Is yeah. what it was. Super Mario 3D All Stars. I think I have it in here. Yeah. No, it was... but I did. I did get the other Super Mario one um, with the dino. That was Super Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy in a set. That was very much worth it. But like, I didn't get the did... set of it though. I just got the one with the dinosaur in it. Oh, um, 64. Yep. No, 60. I didn't. 64 Mario's... the dinosaur. In it. 64 doesn't have a dinosaur in it. And yeah, no, I'm talking about the does. old one. The the new one. I'm talking about the new Mario game. One of the new Oh, ones. Odyssey. Yeah, Odyssey. Thank you. Oh, I never played Odyssey. Dinosaur. Yeah, there's an Odyssey in Mario 64. Uh, dinosaur in, in Mario 64. You want to test me on this? Or is that what we're doing? We're looking this up That's to see if I'm right. That's not a dinosaur. Yes, it most certainly. Okay, maybe it's the Loch Ness Monster, but it's still dinosaur-esque. But I thought that's You're what you were right. It's about. a plesiosaur. Yeah. Not that it in, says that, but that's what it looks like. It's in, a, in, in Hazy Cave. Yeah. And that would be, a, yeah. I know my shit. All right, all right, um, sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that they should. I, I really think Paper Mario is a is a good one they're sitting on. Um, Jack and Dexter, I'm surprised hasn't gotten a port. Um, the mm-hmm. same with Ratchet and Clank from uh, from PlayStation. I'm not really familiar with Xbox's franchises besides Halo. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Um, because I never really played Xbox. Um, but Jack and Dexter was a big one that everyone loved when I was when we were kids, and. Uh, I mean, look, Kingdom Hearts comes out for every fucking console that it's ever that's ever existed. I, I mean, didn't even... have an I didn't have like a console back then. The only one that I had was the GameCube, um, oh. and then I had and then we had the Wii. Uh, we had an Xbox, but it was like one of those. Here's the the one game that goes with it. Yeah, here's here's the Xbox that we're going to use mostly for Netflix, and they'll sit in the living room. And if we if you want, oh no no no, when people we aren't can, home, we're not. But we're also not going to pay for you to have like live or gold. Oh or yeah, whatever. that was my problem too. Yeah, it's like my dad here's was like, the, oh yeah, here's we'll the get one live, game. And then it's my dad's fucking Gmail account, and I'm like, cool, I'm not going to go play live with my friends. Yeah, using my dad's Gmail. Here's the one game, and here you go. And, yeah, and also, like, don't you also you can't go live because uh, right, yeah, no, no we're not no paying online. for that shit. Yeah, no <laughs> online. You, you can play by yourself. It's like all right, well. Fun. But not like, that, uh, not that I'm ungrateful or anything. That <laughs> super shitty or whatever. It's just it, you know, there's that time period where you learn how to use the new console when they were brand yeah. new, and if you didn't, if you were not tech savvy, it wasn't easy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, do you ever play Mercenaries too? No. Look up a gameplay video, Mercenaries 2 after this. It is such a batshit game that I'm surprised they haven't ported it yet. It is, you it, it's you play as this like mercenary and you go around Venezuela and just fuck people up. It is very fun. I, I've seen footage of it's it's a fun game. I'm surprised they haven't ported that either. But I think it's because pandemic is owned by EA now. Hmm. Which is also why we're never going to get Battlefront, Battlefront 2 ports. Hmm. Because that, that was made by Pandemic Studios back in the early 2000s. Um, but yeah, I just needed an excuse. I, I, that was entirely just an excuse for me to be like, why haven't they made a Paper Mario collection yet for the Switch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's like that is such know. a it's such a great game and and like I think everyone I don't think anyone I is... like how sassy it is I've watched I've been watching um the Game Grumps play th- lately to go to bed and um and it, it's such a sassy game yeah like the uh the the second one too it's it is so well made like if you play it now it still looks great and I think it is because Nintendo is so cartoony cartoons always hold up that might have something to do with it. 
where like if you watch like looney tunes like looney tunes still holds up you're not wrong it's a i mean it's style and the nostalgia and you know cartoon is cartoon no matter what and through the times so and they did steal our idea too i think we said this at one point on the podcast but they did do one thing we suggested uh at some point i know me and you definitely talked about it at some point but nintendo what they do we, we said for a mario party game what they should do is and they half asked our idea too they didn't even full ass our idea they what you do is you take the best mini games and the best maps from all the past Mario Party games and put it into one big game. Yeah. They Instead did of trying, they did it bad. They did it, but they didn't include the maps. It's just mini games. Oh, fuckers. They missed um, a golden opportunity. Yeah. Um, the shame. Because, like, have you played a good Mario Party game since, like, eight? The age of eight? No, since like Mario Party 8 for the Wii. <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably not. In the last 20 years, have you played a good Mario Party game? I was like, I don't know, probably. <laughs> no, because like for me, the last, like I never played 7, but I really liked 5 and 6. And then I, I, like, enjoyed 8 enough. I have not played since the Wii. That would be 8. Okay. Yeah. That's and, the one with the weird guy. lack of not wanting to or whatever. I mean, it's, I, I've been, it's one of those. <laughs> well, you were in high school. I can play it in my free like, time and then not have yeah, the free time. It's so. like high school and then out well, of high no, school. No, like, recently I've been thinking, sorry, I've been thinking <laughs> that I wanted to, um, um, I wanted to get it and because I it would be fun for me and, the, you know, and other people. And um, so, yeah, but uh, I've not done it because, you know, time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's nothing against the game or the series or whatever, but. Like, I never played, um, what's it called? Um, like, and the thing is, too, it's like, for me, it's if I'm going to spend $50 on a Mario Party game, like, there are other games I'd rather spend the $50, $60 on. Same. Like That's really it's not, what it comes down to. It's, it's not something that like like for me, if I'm gonna pay 60, first of all, I very rarely buy games at release anymore. Um, like I, I usually wait for a markdown. And I don't know about you, but like I haven't had fun with a, a, a first party title in a while. Um I had a little bit of fun with um Cyberpunk. Oh, I never played that. I heard bad things fun. about it. Yeah, that's what was fun though. And that's not first was- party though. Oh, I don't know then. Like for me, it's like I get more enjoyment out of indie games than I do out of, you know, major releases, first, second party. I don't really get much games for lately. I don't know. Like Um, uh, if you play um, Stardew Valley, like I've like I've played Stardew Valley for hours on end. It's just it's it's just enjoyable. Um, Minecraft. Um, Remember I told you about my Minecraft incident the other day? No, tell me again. Yeah, so I played, I was playing Minecraft when I had COVID and I started a new world and I built a castle and I, I and they have these new things now um, in the newest update, which is like remnants of another portal that are just kind of chilling places. Yeah. And I found that and there was a box next to it that had another obsidian in it. So I was like, oh, oh, it's cool. I can finish the portal and go into the nether and see what happens. I do that, go into the nether and I apparently the portal had spawned directly under a lava flow which didn't load in until i was already out of the portal and that's why it was broken it was not for use (laughs) right well so then what happened was um i finally got diamonds yesterday and i deconstructed the portal my fine i was going to move it somewhere else so that way i'm not there so i go somewhere else build another portal go through it and this one loaded under lava oh like in the like you know there's the the, the vast yeah. seas of it's spawned under that i guess you can't go to the nether <laughs> i i deleted that file entirely <laughs> i'm like fuck this that's funny. i'm done um that's funny but yeah so the christmas special without a transition anymore because we fu- i fucked that up yeah you did fuck that up we should have just gone yeah. with <laughs> yeah um but no it was, it was good to have another topic in so the christmas special idea that i had and i and i want to get your opinion on this um was um, Paramount Plus has basically every Nickelodeon show 
that has ever existed from the inception of the network to now. Mm -hmm. um, and if this idea was a lot better um, three days ago before um, Jeanette McCurdy had her book came out, you remember um, iCarly? Yeah. Sam, the girl who wrote, who played Sam, wrote a book mm -hmm. about the flagrant abuses that happened behind the scenes at Nickelodeon. Oh. Yeah. Um, and about how um, there was a creator of one of the shows um, who would walk into the girls' dressing rooms while they were changing and take pictures of people getting dressed and oh. was an uncomfortable situation all around. And the book was so damning that Nickelodeon offered to pay her off to not release it, but she released it anyway. Um, so that said, um, they have every Nickelodeon special from the la from you know our our childhoods and such. Now, were you more of a Nickelodeon, Disney, or a Cartoon Network person? Because it's a weird console wars kind of thing, like Marvel, DC, Nintendo, or Microsoft or PlayStation. Same kind of thing when you were a kid, which one were you? Was it Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, and what was the other one? Disney Channel. I was definitely a Cartoon Network kid. Hmm. I, I was not, unless it was Looney Tunes, which Looney Tunes were reruns from cartoons in the 40s. But because like- That uh, was the one that like um, Kids Next Door were on. Yes. And okay, yeah. And that's where like Naruto aired. And like yes. other animes. Toonami yeah. was on the, the, the mm -hmm. block but from four o'clock to like six yeah. after school. Um, now, the issue is um, Cartoon Network, their programming was not quite as deep. They didn't have quite as deep a bench because of how much of their block was licensed out from, from Japanese companies. And then on top of that, HBO Max doesn't have the full back catalog mm -hmm. of a lot of the shows. Um, Nickelodeon, on the other hand, they have everything on Paramount Plus because Paramount did the smart thing before they launched their their streamer. They retained the streaming rights to all of their content. Oh, since the beginning of Paramount as a company. So if you go on Paramount Plus, I don't know if you have it or not, but if you go on Paramount Plus, it has the most robust back catalog of movies because Paramount's been around since the twenties or the thirties. I don't have it, but I um. I, I think it is it a free thing um no it starts at it. $4.99 yeah but I'll, I'll I'll go send you my information you can use mine because I get mine for free through T-Mobile anyway so oh, cool yeah so um they have everything on there so I listed out all of the oh cool that's how I came out um all of the specials so I'm going to read out some of the specials see if you remember any of them we're not going to do it now in full but I'm going to just read out see if you remember any of these Spongebob, Patchy the Pirate presents the Spongebob Christmas special. Okay. Rugrats has four Christmas specials over its runtime. Well, really one Christmas special and then a Passover special because Tommy was Jewish. And then, well, that's not Christmas, Passover. That's, Either way. You're right. <laughs> no, that's not. Uh, what the You're right. There was a Kwanzaa it's... special. That's what it was. I meant to write the Kwanzaa <laughs> special down, not the Passover special. There was a Kwanzaa special because they were across the street from Susie. There was a Hanukkah special, and there was another one that they did in, episode, in season nine, but I've never seen that one. Um, Rocco's Modern Life, did you ever watch that? Yes. That one also holds up very well if you watch it now. Um, it's, it's really, like, there's, like, it's all things like him going into real life situations and dealing with it like the one where he goes to the airport is perfect because air travel has not changed at all since 1993 besides tsa's existence mm -hmm. but it's still just as ridiculous so it all still works um so that's one of them rocket power did you ever feel oh, you i did a... like rocket power all right so there's one invader zim i liked invader zim uh hey arnold I have a funny story about Hey Arnold. All right, let's 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 hear the funny Hey Arnold story. Okay, second grade. I thought that the way you told a boy liked them was to spit in their hair. So that's what I did is I spit juice in his hair. 
Well, there you go. And I got in a lot of trouble for it. <laughs> <laughs> like they brought me to the principal and they said, why did you do that? And I was like, I hate him. I hate him. That's what it is. Is I hate him. <laughs> yep. Oh, mm-hmm. You learn something. Yep. <laughs> Don't spit in someone's hair. Yeah, that's not how you tell people you like them. <laughs> um, fairly Odd Parents had a Christmas special. Um, Doug, do you ever watch Doug? I did watch Doug when I was really, really young. Um, Danny Phantom. I like Danny Phantom. Which, the, the origin of Danny Phantom is it's very much the same as the origin of Star Wars in mm-hmm. a weird way. Because Star Wars was... Uh, George Lucas wanted to make a Buck Rogers movie and he went and they said no he was like fine I'll make my own and he made Star Wars Danny Phantom and once you know this you'll you'll pick it up is it's it's very much uh, Butch Hartman wanted to do Mm Spider-Man and he was told no and then he made Danny Phantom and it's it's the same kind of everything's kind of the same where it's like you know the 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 anti-hero who's a friend there's the you know the, the evil twin who's not really evil and you know mm-hmm. oh, okay. um, so Danny Phantom Chalk Zone now I was surprised to learn this that Chalk Zone's Christmas special came in the third season because it was I was surprised to learn that it went on for three seasons I didn't think it went on that long um, Cat Dog it was okay uh, Jimmy Neutron I liked Jimmy Neutron. Wild Thornberries. I liked them. And My Life as a Teenage Robot. And I liked that one. Um, so those were the, the things. I really liked My Life as a Teenage Robot as a kid. I think I had a crush on Jenny when I was a kid. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think every um, kid did. Yeah. Um, so I think that th- those are the list. So we have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We have 17 things, and they're all short. They're all a half hour each. And I'm not saying we got to do it right now, um, or we have to do it this week. But before Christmas in December, when we have this go up, what I want to do is me, you, and hopefully we can get Peter on. He's busy, but he, because he's a doctor now. Um, so he, um, he's away this weekend. I asked him to come on. He was, he was busy. But he, um, each of us will pick our top five from these, from the selection. Um, and then what will happen is we'll assign a point value to each. Um, and what will happen is, like, the one you pick at number one, that's worth five points. Number two, four, number three. Okay, so like that. Keeping in mind, too, this is a audio podcast, so throwing a thumbs up at me doesn't <laughs> tell anyone besides me that... <laughs> thumbs um, up. <laughs> um, seven years. <laughs> um, and then what we'll do at the end... You're never going to want have... me back. You're going to be like, every time you come on, it's a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Every, um, I actually have a, an opening clip for this episode that I found when I was looking for that clip from Infinity War. Mm-hmm. It's it's it, at one point you go, you know, this episode was great. Then we started talking about football and shit and other nonsense, and then just Peter deadpan <laughs> goes, "Thank you for your color commentary." <laughs> That's how we're gonna open this episode, um, and then we'll do final rankings by adding up all the scores and seeing which one's number one, which one's number two of those, you know, and we'll see. Um, Cause I'm assuming that it's a, it's a deep enough one where there's enough to choose from, but at the same time, it's not so deep that it's unlikely that no one will pick the same one. If there's five. Like, like let's say you pick, like, okay, so like, let's say that like I pick for my number one, I don't know, I'm just gonna pick one. Uh, like I picked the Hey Arnold ranking one. the Nick, Nickelodeon shows, right? Right, the, the, the ones okay. on that. We can, we can throw Cartoon Network in there too. I also have to do some research to find the episode numbers and the, and, and the shows and add them to the list too, but we can do yeah, all of them. I love it. You pick, what, how, how many things are in the list? 
right now there's only 17, but that doesn't include yeah. like Dexter's Lab, Powerpuff Girls. If we go into Cartoon Network, oh there's goodness. more. But if we're if we're You're just need doing... us to do more than five. What you mean to do top ten? Yeah. So that right, way you're we guaranteed do... to have people pick the same ones in the different slots. So that way we're not all well like you don't uh, think if we oh yeah pick... that that would have to that there is a chance that could happen where if there's yes, three of us with that little with 17 there's a chance so if we do top yeah. 10 yeah or we do top seven just you to be just weird said, yeah i love it <laughs> um but we'd have to do if we add in more we'll have to make well if we do top 10 we definitely have to add in the cartoon network stuff then um I, I just, which is no problem seven is fine too because i mean then no just have your ratios okay because all three of us have hbo max so it's not a huge deal yep um so either way we'll pick it and we'll we'll do point points for it so like let's say i pick number one hey arnold for whatever reason like i have a stroke and that's my selection um hey arnold's your number one tv show no, no, no. Like that Christmas special is the top of the list. Like that's my number one of the, of the, of the seven that I pick. Okay. Um, and then you pick it for number three, for whatever reason. Like we, we both have strokes that week and they're in sync. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we both pick that to be in the top five. Keeping in mind too, I'm shitting on it, but I haven't seen it since I was a kid. So I'm just, and but it's Hey Arnold. So I'm just assuming it's not that great. Um, like, if we both pick I don't know that, they had some feels in them. There are a few pretty good episodes, but like if we both like you pick it for number three, I pick it for number one. It's eight points. Right, right. So then we mm-hmm. add it up, and then whoever has the most points at the end, that's number one, number two, number three. Mm-hmm. I think we'll as go long from as the... there's three of us, then the seven would be okay. But if it's gonna be just the two of us, it would have to be like ten. Right. Well, I think Peter will definitely be on by then. He he's not not on for any particular reason. He was just busy this weekend. Um. And last weekend I was sick. I thought I was sick last didn't last weekend. But I think you were busy last weekend. I'm always busy. <laughs> right. Um, but the thing is, we have enough lead time now to get this done between now and the end of the year because it is beginning of August. So we have plenty of lead time to do this, get it done, and, and be done with it. Um, but we'll work out the kinks Start and we'll do that. forwarding you my, my work schedule. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. And yeah, I'm just gonna make a calendar. Like, let's make a calendar for like, so that way you know when I'm at events. Because that's my big thing over the last few weeks is like, me and Peter were supposed to do a mid-year top 10 in the beginning of July, but we've both been so busy, we weren't able to do it yet. Oh. Um, because like, I was at um, Long Island International Film Expo and at Stony Brook Film Festival. And I got two Comic-Cons I'm going to this month. Um so I got, we got Long Island Tropic Con and um, Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. Hmm. So I got, I've been busy. So like even my schedule is packing up now on the weekends. Awesome. Um, yeah. Those are fun things, not, you know, well, no, but picking I'm, up extra work. work shifts. It's, it's for work. It's not like I'm doing it for, you know, fun. Well, yeah. Well, like I'm going, I'm going to cover for the Smithtown Chronicle. Oh. So I'm going, I'm going as press. Oh okay yeah well, that's cool okay yeah all right so d- damn work yeah right that is work yeah and that's uh, a fun yeah, so- thing though <laughs> 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 um and then new york comic-con in uh, october um there's another one um but yeah uh, i think we'll wrap up there for today we definitely should do it with people more often because i, I like I, I'm, I'm not sure how much people love listening to me just talk while i'm driving because that's what the podcast is most days i don't know because that was the other thing when i was when i was going through and looking for that clip was at I'm one point when i'm driving that's most of my uh, it's like the other half of my day that's my free well, like time if, <laughs> well, like if it's zoom i, I gotta look into zoom see if i can record zoom calls if we do audio only and then just do it that way we could do that that would work um because like that was the thing is it's like we were listening i was listening to an old episode and peter said something i'm like you don't want to say that because we and i oh, know you said don't say that because it might offend a listener and then i said we don't have to worry about that we have four listeners and three of them are on this call right now and you said i don't listen <laughs> i think we both were like we don't listen to it <laughs> <laughs> no peter did peter used to and he used to give me like notes and i was like why like you, you can just tell me, <laughs> like you can just tell me while we're recording. <laughs> yeah, 
Oh my goodness. Um, <sighs> but yeah, I think that we'll wrap up there for today. I think we've covered a wide range of topics from of stuff that's happened in, in the recent past. Um, and if you're listening to this, we'll be back with the next story whenever it happens. Be aware of spoilers. Tomorrow we will have an episode about Prey and on what's the what's the other one sandman sandman i gotta sit through 10 episodes of sandman oh, between okay. now and probably monday i'm um, sorry um that's on netflix and then that'll be the the other story um yeah i'm regretting taking this job to down chronic i'm being completely honest so there's so much when i was when i was out with covid i watched so much streaming i had such a headache at the end of it really because I sat and watched eight hours straight of TV one day and then four hours the next. Hmm. And I was like, this is this this is not a good idea without like blue light classes. Oh. Um I, yeah. my recommendation is Zenny. They're super duper cheap. I got a pair from uh GameStop when they were closing and they had a, a clearance sale. Are they um, actually nice looking glasses or? Here's the thing. Did you ever play <laughs> Far Cry 5? <laughs> um, what? No. <laughs> Far Cry 5. Oh, I think it's Far Cry 5. Yeah, look at the box art for Far Cry 5. You see the guy in the middle of the box art for Far, Far Cry 5? I can't see his glasses. It's not big enough. Yeah, it's, it's those glasses, but they're blue light glasses. Oh. So no, then. It's those exact glasses that but, they released for Far Cry Five, and they but, had them okay. left over as so like they, a pre-order bonus. The the answer is no. They don't. No, they don't look. They good. don't look okay. If I wear them in the house, my sister will go like, "What the fuck are you wearing?" Okay, I recommend Zenny. They do them, and they are not yeah. yellow like that. Uh, these are blue light blocking. Oh, okay. I thought you. I don't know why, but I thought you wore glasses. I'm wearing glasses. No, I like oh oh your your regular glasses also do blue light blocking. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, they're oh, they're a little are, yellow okay. tinted, like when I'm looking around and stuff, but not very much. Oh, Zenny, I'll look into those. I was actually going to Walmart and get a pair of like ten bucks. If you sure, if you want to get ones that you won't be able to wear around other people. <laughs> I mean, in my house, it's fine. It's not like. I just meant for like, like I figure you're saying like for work or whatever. Well, I don't go anywhere. I work remote with that. Like, oh, yeah. Like when I'm working at my day job, like doing packaging and stuff, I don't need to wear blue light glasses for that. Oh, okay. I need a neck brace for that because I'm sitting there like this for eight hours and I'm like, oh, well, this is nice. <laughs> yeah. Ow, that um, would hurt. Yeah. So that's been my health for the last week. Like since I got back from COVID. Um, so we'll be back with all of that later this week. And as other news this happens. Is still the ad outro? I thought yeah, you it's still did the outro. the outro. No, I'm still doing the outro. Because <laughs> um, I got off on a tangent, which happens more often than you would think too. Um, and uh, what was the other thing? If you have not already, um, Sizzle Reel is now out on Kindles. Go to, I have a link right here. Um, bit bit.ly slash mwp books the link is now active on that page for sizzle reel and the pre-order echo delta part one um and with that we'll be back with more stuff probably later this weekend so until then have a great rest of your week thanks <laughs>